Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'll be doing a full review of the Hunter FGA-9, a currently 9.7 BR British premium jet that costs 8,910 Golden Eagles. In this review, I'll go over its stats, how it plays, its strengths and weaknesses, and then go over if I think that this plane is worth purchasing or not, and who would benefit from it most. Plus, I'll be doing the entire video in this sweet Swiss Air Force skin. As said, as always, please subscribe for totally rad content, but either way, Let's get into the review. So to start, I'll place the stats here on the left side of the screen. Important stats to note are its armament, rate of climb, and turn time. And now let's jump into how it plays. And it plays in a somewhat unique way in that it's a very fast plane for its BR, at least for a non-supersonic, non-afterburning plane. It has tremendous energy retention, meaning that while you won't be able to move as fast as, for example, the MiG-21, F-4s, or most supersonic aircraft, you will be able to keep far more of your speed while in turns, meaning that your average speed while in a dogfight will typically be higher than most planes that you'll fight substantially higher actually for example if you're diving in on a mig 17 and he makes a move to turn in on you you will very likely be able to speed away with no issues as he will have lost most of his speed and you didn't lose yours when pulling up out of your dive even if you have thereabouts equivalent turns this also plays to the fact that the fga9 is among the fastest and best accelerating planes that do not have an afterburner which puts you at a tremendous advantage over most or all similar planes in that same category although this is mostly only an advantage when in a down tier. Ultimately, because of its tremendous energy retention, you will need to ensure that you have good g-force resistance and stamina in your pilot, as this plane pulls extremely hard and has wings that can take the strain. Because of this, you will oftentimes find yourself climbing high at the beginning of a match, pulling out of a steep dive, and then trying to turn in on many planes, which, despite the size of the FGA-9, you will be able to do quite often, especially against heavier planes or mostly American planes. Because of this and its powerful cannon setup, the Hunter will be able to largely keep an inside track on enemies that are turning against you, which will allow you to use your powerful burst of 30mm cannons to great effect. Just be aware though that these are not the highest velocity shells, especially against fast opponents, so you may need to hold the trigger for more than a second to secure a kill. Additionally, if you can get behind your enemies without them noticing, the AIM-9E will also work very well as a way to get an extra kill or two per match. The AIM-9E is not perfect, however, and should still be thought of as an upgraded AIM-9B, as it will still somewhat poorly track enemies and does not have a great amount of Gs that it can handle. It's good, but by no means great. There are much better missiles at or around this BR, such as the R-60s and or Magics. Now for its strengths and weaknesses, and let's get into its strengths. It has surprisingly good acceleration even amongst 9.7 BR planes and despite its lack of an afterburner. Second, it has excellent energy retention, among the best in the game for any plane. Third, despite its size, it is surprisingly maneuverable. It won't outturn most MiGs, but it will put you in a good spot to take out an enemy on the fly. Fourth, it has good, but again, not great M9E missiles. Beyond this, it has a pretty decent anti-ground ordnance loadout with the ability to carry up to four 1,000 pound bombs, with the option to mix in excellent SNEB rockets with two 1,000 pound bombs. For a 6th strength, it has a very powerful setup of four 30mm cannons with a total of 600 rounds between them all. For its 7th strength, as radar, though of course not a great radar. 8th, as extremely durable wings that will not break under intense turning load. And finally, it has really good RP and SL bonuses. And now for its weaknesses, it has no countermeasures, which ends up being a problem around 9.7 BR, but if they bring it down to 9.3 BR, not as big of a problem. For its second weakness, despite being relatively quick for both its size and lack of afterburner, it still of course lacks an afterburner and higher top speed that would bring this plane to the next level. Third, it only has the ability to carry two missiles. Some people might consider the ability to carry four missiles, even if they were lesser missiles like AIM-9Bs, to be better than having two AIM-9Es. Fourth, it has no ballistics computer for anti-ground capabilities, which puts it at a somewhat disadvantage over similar BR premium planes. Fifth, currently it has bad BR placement that will see it up tiered most of the time. In my opinion, this plane should probably be 9.3 BR. Sixth, the FGA-9 is a huge target with a huge jet engine in the back, 
making this plane especially vulnerable to enemy attacks from all sources, be they cannons, HMGs, or missiles. And finally, it only has 3 minutes of fuel load with a minimum load and 12 minutes at max, though even at max throttle, you'll probably have around 50% more flight time than what War Thunder claims, so it's probably somewhere between 4.5 or 5 minutes and give or take around 18 to 20 minutes of actual fuel time. So, should you buy this plane? Well, this is a rare aircraft to be able to purchase, as Gaijin typically does not have this vehicle available for purchase in War Thunder outside of special occasions. While it will typically cost around 9,000 GE, which is roughly equivalent to around $45 USD, I feel that this is a largely competent all-around aircraft at 9.7 BR that should probably see a BR decrease to 9.3 BR, unless of course we get major BR de decompression at the top end of the tech trees, which probably will never happen. It accelerates well, has decent missiles, has a powerful cannon armament which is awesome for people that prefer cannons over missiles, such as myself, as well as a surprisingly good close air support loadout. Truth is, in some ways this plane is better in a close air support role than it is in an anti-air role, which makes it especially useful for ground RB players. It can carry a large payload, all while being able to use its cannons to go after ground or air targets, which makes it extremely versatile, whereas a plane like for example, the Buccaneer S1 is much slower and has no offensive armament, making it much more one-dimensional. Plus, the Buccaneer S1 is not a premium, whereas the FGA9 is. Now, I've been pleasantly surprised with the FGA9 in many ways, and for that reason, along with the fact that it is a surprisingly good close air support plane, and in my opinion, is better for the average player than the Harrier GR1, I will recommend this plane although mostly for cannon lovers and for ground RB players that want a good close air support plane, as well as collectors such as myself. This is a fairly rare plane, as I mentioned before, and because of that, you will not see it all the time on the market, so it is really, really cool to be able to purchase it every now and again, because it will become rarer as time goes on, and you never know when the last time is that Gaijin will offer it. The only downside to using this as a ground RB close air support plane is that it lacks a ballistics computer when that technology becomes fairly common at or around this BR, especially in Russian jets. Otherwise, for air RB, this plane is a bit of a hit or miss, mainly due to its size, lack of afterburner, and so-so missiles. So again, should you buy it? Yes, but only in the cases mentioned before. That being said though, thanks so much for watching everyone. Please, of course, like, comment, subscribe. If you guys subscribe, that would be totally rad. I will appreciate you so much. But either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think about this video and the plane in the comments below. I'd love to hear your opinions. But either way, thanks again, and I'll see you all on the other side. Take care, everyone.